Hey, we want to welcome you to another episode of Questions from the Field. You know, and we realize a lot of times that uh, there's questions that, that sometimes we need to bring in some expertise on this. So today I want to welcome our guest, Mark Van Thiel. He's from AMC. Uh, and we want to talk about meters because a lot of times people have questions about choosing the right meter, taking care of the right meter um, to do their job safely and correctly. Uh, Mark, tell us a little about who AMC is and sure. a little bit about your product line. Sure. AEMC has been in business for 125 years, so we're not um, we're not new to this field. Um, we've been, uh, uh, I, I think, uh, I saw something on one of our LinkedIn pages I thought was pretty interesting. We supplied um, some instruments to, to Marie Curie <laughs> back in the day. So uh, we've been around a while. we got a lot of expertise. Um, it was primarily in the, the division that we work for here in the in the U.S. is um, based around electrical test equipment. And uh, some of our key categories of products are uh, power quality measurements, uh, which include your multimeters, um, ground testers, and uh, megometers. So uh, we manufacture products here in the United States and in France and all over the world. Okay. Well, today what we want to do is we really want to focus on uh, multimeter. I go to a lot of jobs and sometimes people don't, I don't think they really understand what a multimeter is and what the function is of it. Can okay. you tell us wh what is a multimeter and then what are functions of it that apply? Sure, sure. At the simplest, uh, it, it's, it's exactly what it says, a multimeter. It, it's one device that measures multiple things. So typically your handheld multimeter uh, that your typical electrician uses measures voltage, resistance, and current. And between those things, you can troubleshoot a lot of things that are going on within your electrical system. Okay. So, um, so now we have to think about our audience. A lot of times is uh, maybe more entry level electrician or sure. a, a building building engineer, uh, and then you have some guys that are you know they've been in a trade twenty thirty years. They they really understand electrical. They're very gung ho about troubleshooting. Um, for those two groups. So mm -hmm. someone has a little bit of knowledge, someone has an extensive knowledge. What should they look for uh, for a multimeter to help them do their job, which would be a lot of times it's PMs, it's troubleshooting. Uh, and the troubleshooting could be loss of voltage. Uh, it could be checking to see if a motor is good or bad. Uh, what would you, what what would what be what should be those choices for them? Sure, you're, I, I think uh, everyone probably has uh, an electrician has a, your basic multimeter um, that these measure uh, voltage and current and resistance. So you can measure continuity. Do you do you still have a line there? Um, is there some current there? Uh, low low level current is what these will measure. Um, and do you have the proper voltage that you're that you expect to see on multiple phases or single phases? Um, the one thing that people want to consider is is that what type of work do you do? So um, and make sure that the meter meets the specifications that you need. And probably the one most critical, and you in the testing world will know that these meters are rated as a, as a category and a voltage number. So um, for example, this meter is rated for category three 600 volts and you want to make sure that th that your device will be usable in the environment that you're going to be testing that meter uh, into so um, you'll find some that are category four uh, there's you know 600 volt 1000 volt or, or you may see some category two and down to 230 volt and those are pretty more much more geared towards your homeowner uh, level product and even though we have a little simple thing like this that you might think is a homeowner type yeah. product <laughs> and we, uh, used to make fun of one of those like right. that like cracker jack box one right. we used to make a joke about but, but this is a full 600 volt category three device that you can use on a 480 volt system, um, but it's maybe for somebody who doesn't use a, a meter a lot and he just wants to have one uh, in a handy little toolbox with him. So, okay. um, and then you have products that go up into power quality uh, an analysis or a, a clamp meter can be considered a multimeter as well. Um, it's more dedicated to measuring current. Um, and of course you can measure current with a uh, digital multimeter, but typically you end up having to put a current sensor on there. You put it onto the milliamp side and you got to, guys got to do a little math on the milliamps to figure out how many milliamps and how many current, how much voltage yeah. or you know, how much is that. And so a lot of guys don't like to do the math. So they, they tend to buy a um, clamp meter or they have both. Um, and a clamp meter can also measure voltage. So, okay. so you have uh, you know a lot of products that will do what you want to do. Uh, my opinion is is that you should look at the work that you think you're going to do over time, and make sure that you buy the tool that you that that meets your needs. Because um, unlike iPhones, these don't change all that often, and they're going to last a long time. Yeah. Um, they come with a you know 
typically two-year warranty, but it's not uncommon for us to find people who are, we're calibrating uh, instruments for people that are 10 or 15 years old, and okay. they're still useful in the field. So so you want to make sure that you choose a good quality instrument when you buy one on the front side. As you say, I think my meter's about 15 years old, <laughs> but it gets calibrated on a regular basis. Um, exactly. So we have those who will have that. Now you have, uh, for some of these multimeters, you can have uh, a built-in maker. So if right. they want to check, uh, you know, shorten a wire or a motor. But right. for those who say, nah, I want something a little more robust, they can actually buy a separate one. Right. Well, so maybe um, you have a lower end unit like this that just is doing your amps, current, and voltage. But you have a, a basic megometer that can give you some, uh, uh, in fact, is we should tell people what a megometer does. <laughs> so yeah. what's a megometer do is it measures the insulation resistance um, between um between your between two wires or the plates in a motor, so you want to make sure that the insulation is good. Um, so that's the test that you're uh, uh, using a, a a megometer to do, and it and as the uh, the name implies, it measures in meg ohms, so you know really high numbers on the side of the decimal point. Okay, well let's take let's take that thought you just talked about there. So why would someone use something like that in their building, and why so, should they use it in their building? Well, what what a mega meter can do is give you. Uh, it, and it's not something that you just test once and say it's okay. I mean, while there's some general tables and general values that you should be above or below to consider kind of pass fail type things, uh, the the real value of a, taking a mega meter reading is that you would over time trend that value. So if you have a, uh, the 480 volt motor in your HVAC system that's you know 200 horsepower, you may wanna take a megometer reader of that, say once a year or so, and then trend that over time. And, and that can give you an indication of maybe that you wanna take that motor in for preventative maintenance instead of catastrophic failure repair. Yeah. So somebody might have a condenser water pump, chill water pump, a fan, motor. It's just a way for them just to see how the life expectancy, if it's holding right. up to it right. or if it's starting to decline, right. to give some attention right. to it. Right. And, okay. and, and you, you, you certainly want to do that on your higher value items. You, know, okay. you, may, want, you may not want to do it on two horsepower motors, but yeah. if you 100 horse. But something that really horsepower. drives has a big impact at a property. Right. Or, or, or has an impact on your production. You know, if, if it's going to shut down your production in your production facility, yeah. you might want to think about that as well. So, so this is a preventive maintenance uh, type uh, instrument. Okay. And it can be used for troubleshooting, too, if they're wondering Absol about something. Absolutely. All right. So let's talk about, because um, a lot of times people just buy it and they just think, okay, it's good It's good for life. I shouldn't have to do anything with it. Let's talk about care and calibration. Okay. Um, typically, with the uh, National Institute of Standards testing, um, people like you who do uh, a lot of business, uh, the, your uh, customers will ask you to have an NIST calibration, and typically that that means that you're sending your product to a, an accredited lab, and they're going to give you a calibration certificate, and that's a traceable calibration uh, on that unit. So if somebody wanted to look back over time, they would see that there's a, a traceable uh, calibration on that, and that's typically recommended at a one-year interval. Okay. That someone would uh, have a um, calibration. How, how about like caring, caring for? Because a lot of times guys just throw them. I see guys just throw them in their bag and stuff sure. like that. And you know, we talk about leads. Like you know, when to, how should you inspect your leads? When should you replace your leads? What should be involved with it? Well, you know, obviously you want to take care of the basic things. If you see that your insulation is frayed and broken you should get a new lead. Uh, I mean, th th there's a safety reason Well, I want you to know, I've been, hit I've been hit twice off of leads that had exposed wire yeah. and didn't know and it. You're, and so. you're putting 600 volts on there. <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing the other thing that you want to consider, too, is, is that these leads have a marking on them, just like this, this device has a category rating. The leads will also have a category rating. So you want to make sure that you're, you're using a lead that has an equal or greater rating, uh, category rating to the device that you're connecting it up to. Okay. Um, and then once a year going in, uh, I like what you had here. Like you have a megger. Right. Um, how do you know if it's reading properly? So right. like here you actually have a device that someone could own. Right. And right. check to see if you're getting the proper reading. Right. So we have some tools here so you can really simply just, you know, connect to the red and black leads uh, to the positions on here. And then there's a standard here. And then you do a simple test. And it's telling me that at... Um, uh, at up to 2,500 volt test, that this should read uh, 100 mega ohms, okay. and it and if it, it's just going to give you a a, a a a confidence factor that your product is your your instrument is still working properly. Well, especially if you're going to flag a motor and right. take it out, you want to make sure that it's reading properly. Absolutely. I know Absolutely. Uh, one rule of thumb that we like to do is like yeah, so it's calibrated. You take care of your multimeter. 
but check it against a known source. Right, like, exactly. Uh, you know, recently, we were doing a power outage, and we checked that, hey, utility dropped power. We saw the meter go blank. We checked it, but then we took it to a known source, which our generator we knew was putting out 120. Right. We verified it was me- reading right, but this will allow you to do that for the megahertz. Yeah, but so. because where are you going to go find a... Yeah, on, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, and we have them for ground testers, and uh, like our ground clamp comes with a with a 5 ohm, so okay. that when you clamp it around here, you can validate... Verify that it's actually... Verify that it's working every time before you before you take a measurement on that. So, okay. Um, you know, a, a regular standard electrician who does a lot of work, maybe he doesn't need to send it in for a traceable calibration. He, he should just send it in for a calibration every so often. Okay. Uh, you, you know, Depending again on their needs. On his their needs usage. or uses, yeah. Okay. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you got to look at the job, you know, jobs, you're going to work on some jobs that say, you must use an NIST calibrated device. I can yeah. send a customer a brand new device that meets all of the factory specs, but sometimes they need to have an NIST rating on oh, it. So, go. and so it has to be calibrated from day one in a traceable fashion. Okay. Well, great. I want to thank you, Mark, for joining oh, no us problem. today. Uh, really appreciate it here. Time. And I really hope this helps you uh, in your choice for what to use properly to do your job safely and accurately.